Welcome back. Rolling is our favorite library for network communication. The default way of making network requests has a lot of boilerplate and is not very easy to read. Let's try to reduce the boilerplate so that the code is easy to read and understand. This will be a multi-part tutorial. In the first part, we will see the default way of making requests and where we can reduce the boilerplate. Create a new Corel Android project. Open its layout file. Drag and drop a text view and change its ID to text view URL. Now switch to the text mode and duplicate this text view twice. Change the IDs to text view response and text view error. These text views will be used for showing the URL, response from the URL and error if there is any. Now add a button to the layout and change its ID to button send. To make things look nice, add a margin of 16 dp to all the widgets. Now let's run the app and see how it looks on the emulator. Now we have to add dependency for Voli library. Open your browser and google Voli library. Go to the first link and copy the dependency line. Now back in the IDE, open your module level build.gradle file and paste it. I have already added the dependency so I am going to undo here. Also don't forget to add the internet permission in the manifest file. Let's create a volley string request. The first parameter is a request method. Here we are using get method. The second parameter is a URL. For this example, let's use a JSON placeholder. Open your browser and search JSON placeholder. Open the link for typeico.com. This is the URL we are going to use. Now click on the try it button to see the result from the URL. If our app works fine, we should get this response. Back in the IDE, paste the URL. There is two more parameters for string request. They are response listener and error listener. You can see in the opening curly brace for response listener, it returns a string. We can get the result using the keyword it, or we can change the variable name to something meaningful. Similarly, error listener returns a volley error object. Let's change the name to volley error. Now we can set the response string to our text view. Here instead of using text view dot set text method, we can make use of property access syntax and simply write text view response dot text equals response string. We can do the same for error text view also. Here we should set the text to volley error dot message. We have created our string request. Now we have to create a volley request queue and add the string request. You can see that these lines are currently in the onCreate method, which means it gets executed as soon as the app is opened. So let's move these lines to the onClick listener for the button. Select the lines we want to move and press Ctrl Alt T. This will bring a pop-up menu. Select the third one in the list. That will enclose the selected lines in a curly braces. Now type button send dot set on click listener just before the opening curly brace. One last thing before we test our app. We can declare the URL as a field in our class and refer it in the string request. Instead of doing this manually, simply put the cursor anywhere on that URL string and press Ctrl Alt F. From the pop-up menu, highlight our URL string and press enter. Now the ID is asking where to move this code. Select main activity. Now change the name to URL. There's a text view to show the URL, so let's set this URL field to that text view. Now let's run the app. Click send request. Okay, the URL text view is changed. And there's a response. Luckily, there are no errors. We have the JSON response as a string. We can convert it to a JSON object. Suppose we want to pass some values to the URL. For example, we have to pass username and password to a login API. We would have to modify our string request like this. Add object colon just before string request. Then add opening and closing curly braces just after the closing parenthesis of string request. This way we are overriding the string request object. Now insert the curly braces, type 
override fun get params. Now select the get params function from the suggestions. Create a hash map called params and put our arguments in the hash map. Now return params. Whenever we have to pass arguments to a URL, we have to add object colon and override get params function. Imagine doing this for each and every API call in our app. Another thing that I find difficult is constring parameters. For example, if you are passing the value told for an age argument, you can see we can simply pass the field there. The hash map demands it to be converted to string explicitly. We would have to do this to all the non-string parameters. So is there a better way? Yeah, and it's very simple. Just put all this boilerplate into a separate class and use that class for all our API calls. By doing so, we can convert this exact operation into something like this. We keep the URL here, we will get the response string here and the error string here. And we tell the method of request, that is whether it's get or post here. And inside this get function, we will pass our arguments like this. Put the parameter name in double quotes followed by the keyword to and then the value of the parameter. See here, we don't have to convert the non-string field explicitly. We can give parameters of any type and it will be converted to string within our digit request class. Now we can set the response and error strings like this. You can see the code on either windows does the same thing except the left window has less signs of code and is very easy to read. In our next video, we will learn how to create this DigiRequest class.